All right, you guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the ultimate vacuum. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so back in the olden days when you wanted to buy a pretty good cordless vacuum, you ended up buying something like this. This is the Dyson V8 Absolute. Um, absolute, animal, whatever, the, all the vacuum heads are the same. The Absolute and the animal, only thing difference really is the, the attachments and stuff that come with it. But this one right here is pretty much a Dyson V8 Absolute. I got other cleaner heads and attachments other where else, but it's got some wild styling colors and stuff. But underneath all these colors, they're somewhere around 74 inches of suction, um, 45, 46 um, CFM, um, pretty really small dust cut. Um, some carbon fiber bristles and a rechargeable lithium ion battery. Starting with the VAs, they had like HEPA filtration on every model or every line or whatever you want to call it. Um, V7, you could get some uh, with HEPA, but you had to make sure you got the HEPA model. Um, but anyways, Dyson is generally known or considered on the market to be one of the top end um, vacuum manufacturers. But I think these things can be pretty improved. I mean, one of the biggest, one of my biggest gripes about this thing is the dust cup, obviously, uh, but it's a cordless vacuum, so they're pretty much designed to be pretty small, but it's pretty much the build quality. I mean, look at this, this, this plastic feels a little cheap. Um, and look, look at the slack on this thing. I don't know if you can see that, but this, look at the slack on this. And then when you put it down, it's kind of got a tilt here like this. Obviously no one really stores, most people probably don't store it like this. They probably store it up on the wall and hanger that it comes with. But I mean, with a lot of like motion going like this, it's pretty much prone to failure. Um, this plastic just feels cheap, sure it's shiny and looks cool and stuff, but it scratches easily. This thing gets discolored easily, dented and stuff like that. But um, they make pretty good stuff. I just wish that the build quality and stuff like that was uh, really improved by them. Um, but this, um, has two modes. You can run a maximum suction mode and high suction mode, which is pretty much low and high. Uh, but if you run a max suction, you get somewhere around seven to eight minutes of runtime. And combined with the really small dust cup, I mean, I think um, it, it has a lot of room for improvements, especially around um, the build quality and stuff like that. Um, but this one I have on here is the um, bristles for carpet. Um, they also came with the soft model, but like I said, there's a lot of room for improvement. We're going to try to take the best parts of this vacuum and combine it with another vacuum to make the ultimate vacuum. All right, guys, so this is the Milwaukee M18 Fuel 3-in-1 Backpack Brushless Vacuum. I don't know if I, there's so many nectars and names and whatever, but this is pretty much the Milwaukee to M18 fuel brushes vacuum. They say they're in one because you could backpack it, hang it, or carry it or whatnot. But this is pretty much a, a vacuum backpack that they um, designed to work on a job site for dust collection and all that stuff. So uh, most people know Milwaukee generally makes pretty much premium tools or whatnot. So this is no exception. It works pretty well, especially for a uh, cordless vacuum. Um, let's go over some quick specs real quick. I think on paper it has somewhere around 74, 76 inches of water lift suction um, and somewhere around 55 CFM on high. And something on low, I can't remember. I don't know who, who uses vacuum on, on low these days. Who uses anything on low? I think almost everyone uses everything on high. But, um, and with my configuration, meaning 12 volt, I got a 12 volt battery right here. Um, and with this 12 volt battery, I think I was getting somewhere around 31 to 32 uh, minutes of runtime on high. Okay, and that's pretty good. Remember, the biggest gripes I had with the Dyson with number one build quality, this way out surpassed the build quality of the Dyson. Um, the small dust bin on the Dyson, I can't remember how small it is, but within two minutes, it's done. Um, this one, it's got a gallon dust bin. Runtime, roughly around eight minutes on the Dyson on high. Um, like I said, on this one on high with the 12 volt, you can get somewhere around 31, 32 minutes of runtime, at least for me on the uh, 12 amp hour battery. Um, so this vacuum is actually pretty good. I like it, we use it all the time. Uh, we're cleaning all the time. We got two Australian Shepherds, a baby. So there's dog hair everywhere all the time. There's cereals everywhere, cereal. You look wherever you want to sit down on a couch, there's cereal there, all right? There's stuff everywhere. So we're pretty much vacuuming. And like I said, the biggest gripe with that Dyson was the dust cup. But every once in a while, you'll find like a small cereal stuck inside the dust port in the vacuum and it's really hard to get out. Um, and it just gets stuck there a lot for a big piece of the cereal. So that's also another complaint too. Um, but for my setup, um, I've pretty much modified this vacuum to work with the Dyson accessories. Since the Dyson accessories are actually pretty good, um, the motorized head is probably one of the best ones I've seen on the market, at least the ones I've come by. Um, so if we attach the, if we somehow figure out a way to use the 
uh, accessories on Dyson with this vacuum, I think you'd have the ultimate vacuum. And that's pretty much what I got going on here. So most of you guys know the, the tools and accessories that come with this are not the best for home cleaning. They work pretty good on job sites, but the attachments aren't motorized. You get one crevice tool and one sweeper tool that's kind of used for like sweeping up dust on the floor, plywood or whatnot. Um, and that works pretty well, but on a home when you got like hardwood floors and carpeting, it doesn't really work very well. You also need something motorized. And everybody knows even air driven stuff, just not very good as motorized stuff. You want a dedicated motorized attachment. So that's where this thing comes in. My configuration, I figured I've set it up to use uh, Dyson accessories. And the way I set it up was getting a power source adapter and just pretty much mounting it to here, okay? Um, and then running a pretty much a power cable with the flexible coil so, so that it also flexes with the hose um, all the way down to the end and I could plug in power at the end. Um, you technically could pull the power from the battery that's installed on the battery um, right here, down here, but I didn't do that for a few reasons. Number one, I wanted to extend the runtime for as long as possible. And if you have a dedicated battery running the attachments, you got a lot more uh, power and runtime. Um, and also I don't wanna modify the vacuum permanently in any way, meaning I don't want to solder connectors and wires to the wires that are already in the vacuum port apart and stuff like that, mainly because if it ever does need to be warrantied for whatever reason, I could warranty without getting any warranty denied claims of it being modified. So with this way, um, I, get, I get somewhere around 31 minutes of runtime with the vacuum on high, um, and that's, that's actually really great com compared to the eight minutes on the Dyson. You don't have to use this M18 battery. I mean, you could run it with this Milwaukee, uh, Makita battery. This is the, the configuration I originally had with a Makita 18 volt battery like this um, because I have more uh, Makita batteries than um, the Milwaukee batteries. So um, you could do it this way, but since we got Milwaukee battery down here, we'll just put the Milwaukee battery right here. So this is pretty much gonna drive the attachments. All right, so this vacuum is actually really nice. This is not meant to be a review on this vacuum, but it's got this strain pressure relief that it can swivel and pull in all directions. Um, and this hose is actually really flexible and stretches really long, so it's really convenient. Um, so I use a power cord um, that's used on I don't know where I got this from, probably some car accessory or something, but it stretches too. So now the, the hose also stretches um, the power hose actually stretches with the vacuum hose. So it works really well. It's got like pockets and stuff you can hit, hang attachments from. I'll show you in a second. Let's put it on real quick. So if I put this thing on, all right, you got my, you got your hose here that has pretty much all your attachments uh, or your, your belt here that pretty much has your attachments, or at least the ones I use the most. So if I'm vacuuming like so, then the attachment, just pull it right out, use it, put it back in. So you're gonna, you're gonna ask, how, how do I get the hose on here? Actually, it's pretty, pretty simple. So this right here is the absolute, um, or no, this is a soft cleaner brush roll or brush head or motorized head, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, but this is the soft cleaner head. On the absolute one, you get pretty much all the attachments. So this one's actually really nice. And I, I'm pretty sure it's almost, there's no better vacuum attachment for cleaning hardwood floors than this thing. All right, so you need this thing right here. I don't know where that came from, but we'll vacuum that up in a bit. But anyways, um, so this actually runs really well. You can use, since we're using the uh, vacuum hose from the Dyson, you can pretty much use all the Dyson accessories that come with it. Um, don't worry about this Velcro here. Originally I had a design where um, the battery was resting here because I didn't want to put on the vacuum so I could just have no cord here. Um, but it got really awkward really fast, so don't worry about that. So that doesn't do anything now. So this hose, this end of this hose without the special adapter actually fits perfectly on here. All right, so now, um, I would just plug this in, put the vacuum on high. So if anything, it act this head actually runs better on M18 power. Most of you guys know the, the power wheels hack with the 12 volt battery, same difference here. Um, and it's really convenient because if I'm vacuuming like so, and I get up to, I don't know, say a corner or something, and I want to take that off, just take this head off, put this dusting brush, I don't know what it's called, but it's called dusting brush, right? You just go here, 
vacuum, take it off, put it back. You don't have to put it back, but I'm putting it back. Then you could just put this back on and go, right? So it's actually really convenient, because like I said, I could vacuum like this for roughly around 31 minutes of runtime on just one 12 um, You could put a 2-0 on this power source adapter here. Um, I didn't do that, like I said, because I have 5 that are the most common ones that I have. It works really well. It's pretty comfortable. It's on your backpack. Most of the weight's on your back, so you don't really have any weight on your vacuuming arm, or the realized weight on your vacuuming arm is really light. So this is pretty much what I would say is a really good setup. The suction, meaning the cyclonic action on the Dyson is way, way surpasses um, the Milwaukee cyclonic action. Cause this just has one big cyclone, whereas the Dyson has one big cyclone in the middle, middle and a bunch of external smaller cyclones that really um, let the dust drop to the bottom. So that one is actually really good. The dust bin is right here and it's easily removed. You pull this out, you press it down, you pull this out and you hit this and everything falls out. There's really nothing in here for it to catch to. Um, so it becomes no problem. You press this, everything falls out. I'm not gonna do it because I don't have, I don't have anything under it to, to uh, capture it. But um, this has a certified HEPA filter. I don't know if the Dyson, I couldn't find anything about the certification of the HEPA filter on Dyson, but I assume it's HEPA material or pretty good HEPA filter as, I mean, it's Dyson the company. But this fil filter here on the Milwaukee is a certified HEPA filter and you can um, just get replacements. I think the replacement filters are somewhere around like 20, $25. So you don't really have to replace it. I haven't replaced it yet. It works pretty well. Um, every couple times, every couple dust bins, I'll go outside and just either use compressed air or just drop or shake it on the ground to let the loose things fall out. But like I said, this works really well. I'll throw out some clips of um, vacuuming. Um, I can pretty much get around the whole house uh, without um, running out of battery or without the dustbin being full, as long as I start with everything empty. And all the attachments are carried right here, so it actually works really well. The only other, there's about two other cordless backpack vacuums I know of, obviously the Makita one, um, the two, the 36 volt, two 18 volt setup. Um, I didn't like that one. I looked at it a lot before I picked up this one, um, but I thought this one was just a little bit better, mainly due to the specs on paper. Um, also, the dust bin on the Makita uses the bag, which is, can technically be better, but it's pretty small. Um, and the other one, I think it's made by Pro Team, and that thing is somewhere around like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. Whereas, um, and you don't get, um, I mean, that thing is like a proprietary thing by itself. So if you're already in a tool lineup and you, and you have milky tools, obviously this is the way to go. Um, if you're in the professional cleaning business and you just need that one vacuum, the pro team may be the way to go, I don't know. But for us, I think for most uh, normal people who need a backpack vacuum, this is gonna be pretty much the way to go. So like I said, um, this has been the best vacuum for us that we've used, just cleaning around. You can do daily cleaning, no issues. Um, if you have enough batteries, you could run pretty much all day with this thing. So, um, like I said, I hope this video has helped you guys out, and we'll see you guys next time.